Hey folks, Randy Newberg here. I am uh, sheltering in place here at my office all by myself. No camera guy today, so if this doesn't work out, I apologize. But anyhow, we're going to talk about Nevada. The deadline, May 4th, all online. You're going to find out your results online by, I think they said May 22nd this year. So really quick turnaround, less than three weeks from when the deadline closes to when Nevada lets you know. And I think people are wondering, should I even apply in Nevada? Should I apply anywhere based on the uncertainties? But if you do decide to apply in, to apply in Nevada, the cost is an upfront non-resident license, which is $155. And I tell people, once you make that investment in the upfront cost of the license, you may as well apply for every species that a non-resident can apply for. Mule deer, antelope, elk, desert sheep, and California bighorn sheep. Those are the five that we can now apply for. Uh, you can apply for black bear. I don't. It's a very small fringe in the western, very, very western California, Nevada border where the black bear hunting is. If you want to, go ahead. But I'm going to focus mostly on elk, deer, antelope, and the two sheep species. Once you buy your $155 license, then you've got a $10 application fee for each species, but elk is $15. And when you think about the quality of the elk hunting in Nevada, you, you'll pay that $5 extra for that raffle ticket. Um, and for me, that's really what it is. The, the $155 non-resident license is kind of the, the cost to get into the, to the game. And then your applications are just like buying raffle tickets. It's like, okay, 10 bucks. And a lot of people say, well, I'm just gonna buy a point. Well, I get that if you have a scheduling conflict or something, but I never just buy a point when I can be applying for something because you just never know what year you're gonna get that low random number. Nevada has a bonus point system and it's an interesting bonus point system in a couple ways. First of all, they carve away a specific pool of tags for non-residents. So we're not competing against the residents for their tags. We're just all the non-residents in one draw, separate draw, for this portion of tags, which is usually about 10% of the tags. And they square the bonus points. So let's walk through how that works. So I'm gonna use an example that you have 10 bonus points and I have two. And you'd say, well, that means you should have odds that are probability maybe five times what mine are because you've got 10 raffle tickets and I got two raffle tickets. But that's not how it works in Nevada. Nevada squares your points and squares my points. So let's walk through how that works. You've got 100 because 10 squared is 100. Plus you get one for the current year application. So you have 101 tickets, raffle tickets for lack of a better way, way of saying it. Uh, they're really random numbers. I have two. So if I have two, that means that I've got two times two plus, which is four plus my current application. So I have only got five raffle tickets or five random numbers. I've got five, you've got 101, you've got more than a 20 times greater probability of drawing a tag than I do. So Nevada really skews the system towards the high point holders by the mere fact that they square the bonus points. So the one thing that you can take advantage of in Nevada to somewhat mitigate or uh, give you maybe slightly better odds is the really high point holders they only usually apply for the top, top units. And there are some amazing hunts in Nevada, but even their, what's considered a lower tier unit in, Mon in Nevada is really a good hunt. So they give you five choices and they look at all five of your choices before they go to the person in line behind you. So uh, you've got 101 random numbers. They assign those to you and they look at your 101 random numbers and say, okay, here's your lowest random number for this species. That's what you're going into the draw with that random number. 
I've got five random numbers. It's like, hmm, none of these are probably that low. One might be, but they're going to pick my lowest random number. And for that species, I go into that draw for or, or with that lowest random number. So again, your lowest random number is far likely to be a much lower number than mine just because you have 20 times as many random numbers assigned to you. So they do that, They and I'm going to use my own self. So I'm standing kind of in the line. I'm, I'm not in a line, but with the random numbers, I'm back here somewhere. Well, they go to the first person in line, and pff, they're going to get their first choice. Second person in line, there's probably still enough tags. They're going to get their first choice. They start working their way back into the line here, and now a lot of the first choices are gone. So they start looking at second, third, fourth, and fifth choices, and they start filling some of those. Well, here's how the strategy that you use for selecting the units for each species can maybe help you a little bit if you're not just absolutely tied to, I gotta have the best unit. I, I do this. I never know if I'm gonna get that super low random number. It can happen at any time. So my first choice is always some crazy, almost like if I won the governor's tag type unit. If I have the governor's tag, I know I'm hunting in that unit. That's always my first choice. And then I might throttle back a little bit to something that's maybe not quite as difficult draw odds as my second choice. My third choice, I'm starting to get to middle of the road. My fourth choice, uh, I still might have something that's pretty tough odds, but my last choice, is always something that is the best drawing odds for a non-resident. Like in, in the mule deer draw, you can mix and match rifle, muzzle loader, and archery applications among your five. So I always start out with some really hard rifle hunt, some not quite as hard rifle hunt, probably another rifle hunt, then maybe one of the more difficult archery hunts, and then my last archery application. I usually look at last year's odds and I see which unit they had leftover tags for last year. And that's usually my fifth deer application in Nevada. I just like to go. I, there is not an archery mule deer hunt in Nevada that well, I would consider low quality. Well, then I start looking at, all right, antelope, elk, sheep, all the other stuff. I do the same thing. I go on to go hunt and in the filtering system or the draw odds that they have in the insider, you can just sort it and quickly look, all right? What are the worst odds? What are the best odds? And with sheep, I want to go desert sheep hunting in the worst way. I've got tons and tons of points there. I'll probably never get to go, but I don't really care what unit it is. So my last choice for sheep is always the unit that is the easiest for a non-resident to draw. I don't really care what unit it is, but that's my last choice. My first choice is always one of those really hard ones, and then I mix them in between. Just know that for uh, elk and antelope, you're looking at a waiting period, uh, and, and the sheep. Um, so the, the elk hunts are something that are just phenomenal. I use the same strategy. Nevada's elk hunts, some of those archery hunts are just in August, like August 15th to the 31st. Well, most of the high point holders say, I'm not burning my points on a hunt with a bow that's not even in the rut. That, that's not what I want to do. Well, I'll go. If you give me that tag in August, I'll be there. So I start populating my five choices with some of those lower demand hunts. And yeah, my first choice again is something that might be crazy and way out in the weeds. But uh, it's, it's the way that you can balance it a little bit to your, your benefit in Nevada, as long as you're not focused and, and absolutely tied to having the best hunt in the state. If that's the case, even if you're a match point holder, like I am way up the, way up the charts on the number of sheep points I have, there's not a sheep unit in Nevada for which I have more than a 1% chance. Even with all my years of applying, and all the points I have, I'll probably never have a sheep unit where there's better than 1% odds. So you just got to accept that when you apply in Nevada. If you don't draw, uh, there are leftover tags. 
some in most years and they're mostly deer tags uh, and they're mostly archery deer tags so just know if you pick up a tag in the leftover draw that is in june it still burns your points so a lot of people think oh i'll apply in the leftover draw they draw and then their points go away and they're like what happened well know that in nevada you burn your points in the leftover draw you can turn a tag back in uh, if you turn your tag back in you don't get your money back you'll get your points points back go to the insider here go to go hunt uh, if you sign up for the insider and use promo code randy that'll give you fifty dollars of free credit uh, in their gear shop and you're in the drawing that's going to be coming up in the first week of july you'll be in the drawing for a wyoming commissioner's tag so um a lot of really cool stuff in nevada deadline may 4th stay well stay healthy and good luck in the draw